the last time the president um, did not conceal his anger about the declining security situation. What he said today was virtually a reaffirmation of what he said the first time. Yes, Mr. President said, you are doing your best as far as I'm concerned, but there's still a lot more to be done. I am more concerned about the promise we made to the larger Nigerian society, and I am ordering an immediate uh, re-engineering of the entire security apparatus. And this is something that I believe will be done in a very short time. All right, welcome back. Well, there you have the NSA speaking about the meeting, the recent meeting they had with the president. Well, don't forget that earlier, in the last uh, communication from the NSA, he had said, in that same briefing as well, uh, telling Nigerians that the president did say that the best, the be that's the, from service chiefs, was not good enough and that they had to do a lot more. That's what he was referring to as the last time they spoke. So uh, we're focusing on that this morning. And so we've got um, retired Brigadier General Sani Usman, who is a former director of Army Public Relations, joining us from Abuja. Good morning, sir, and thank you for joining us today on the program. Okay, well, yes, at least you've seen him, but uh, you're just going to guess it and then join us. So taking it from that perspective, from what the uh, NSA did tell Nigerians about that meeting, it appeared as though security agencies had been playing the ostrich because if the president now says Nigerians have lost confidence in the system, this speaks volumes. How do you, isn't this what a lot of people had been saying about security in the country a, a long time ago? Yeah, can you please, good morning. Yeah, can you please repeat? Uh, can, can you hear us at least? Can you hear us? Question. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Well, the comments from the NSA, quite a number of Nigerians to say, we're not surprised at this. But on the part of the security agencies, many would have thought they as well should know some of this. But when he says that they are going to rejig the security system, from your understanding, what does this mean? Uh, basically, I think um, he made use of uh, two words, uh, rejig and re-engineering, which is the same thing with uh, almost re uh, recalibrating the security architecture. And every Nigerian is quite aware of the fact that um, uh, the security situation in the country uh, is not the way it should be. So uh, these uh, concerns permeate all segments of the Nigerian society. So it is not surprising that the National Security Council has uh, met and uh, come out with far-reaching decisions which include what the National Security Advisor has said, and uh, I think what we'll do, we should exercise patience to see what the government mean by those words, rejigging and re-engineering. But by and large, uh, when you said that you are going to do that to security architecture, I think the pertinent questions to ask are the issue of uh, first the legal framework. Are they going to tamper with the legal framework or are they going to tamper with the structure, or are they going to tinker with other aspects? Take, for instance, there are a lot of issues involving equipping, you know, manpower, and so many other things, motivation and morale of the security forces. So basically, we have to exercise patience, give uh, the government a chance to see to what extent such uh, promises will be carried out. But by and large, 
going back to what you have said earlier on, the truth is that even the security agencies were quite aware of some of the challenges. And I believe it stems from the fact that uh, we are fighting war in this country. And a lot of people are not aware of that fact. And therefore, there is a need to, be, uh, to have a holistic approach. It is just not the kinetic. There are other issues involved. Take, for instance, you know, uh, to what extent other uh, segments of the Nigerian society uh, are carried on board. Because you, you need to carry the total population of the Niger, I mean, the total Nigerian population on board when you are talking about security. It is agreed there are lead agencies, there are agencies of the government, there are security chiefs, but it's a collective responsibility. So a lot of things, I believe, will unfold as time goes on. Okay, but part of uh, this is that now the National Assembly, everybody knows this, they have also said, let the service chiefs just take a bow and go. That, look, they've done as much as they can. Now, the president is saying that Nigerians have lost confidence in that system, that they need to rejig it. So even if they rejig it, is it going to be presided over by the same service chief? So why is there that reluctance to let the service chiefs go? So if you're going to rejig, rejig all the way through. First and foremost, I don't speak for the government, neither do I speak for the president commander-in-chief. It is his prerogative to hire and fire his security services uh, chiefs as he deemed fit. Then secondly, I think we are playing too much politics with security issues in this country. Uh, there are clear uh, you know, division of powers between the judiciary, the executive, and of course the legislature. At what extent will the National Assembly delve into the uh, you know, roles or that are exclusive uh, preserve of the executive is entirely a different thing. But I can understand their concern, but they should also respect the fact that the president reserved the rights to work with whoever he deemed fit. Unless of course, when it comes to their role of confirmation, if they have any other thing, they have to raise on observation. I think what the security chiefs need now, and uh, everybody, I think all hands has to be on deck. The military particularly need all the support, understanding, and encouragement they require. And I don't think there is anybody that uh, will not be doing the best he could in any way he didn't fit to do that. So basically, these are the issues. If you look at it, it is not just the security sector in this country that is having problems. There are so many other, you know, parts of uh, the Nigerian societies that are having problems. So, but we need to look at the issue of strategy. We have to look at those things that we have not been doing right and see how best we can. But most importantly, it must be people-centric. We, we also have um, a security consultant joining us this morning, um, Alfred Ononubo. Uh, we, first of all, when you heard that the federal government, the president has said that there is a need for us to rejig the entire um, security apparatus of the nation, first of all, whose responsibility would that be? And what exactly would you think needs to be rejigged? This is not the first time we are hearing this. So when we hear rejig or re-engineer the entire security apparatus, whose responsibility is it? And what exactly do you think should be re-engineered? Um, first of all, thank you for having me on. I'd like to give my deepest compliments to the statesman and uh, one of the security institutions in Nigeria. My compliments, sir. Um, I, I, I feel it's the exclusive responsibility of the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It falls on the president. Um, also, the fact that he has a political platform and uh, he's running a political manifesto, he promised Nigerians that he would deliver safety at their doorsteps, uh, puts a very high responsibility on Mr. President. However, I feel strongly that 
we seem to be combing the problems on the surface. This is about heightened risk ma management, the state of the Nigerian uh, uh, system has been traumatized over a period of time, right back to 1966, when we had the military push, a lot of things have gone out to the public, uh, breaking the bonds of patriotism, removing Nigeria as a common project, and we've pursued diverse interests since then. Unfortunately, in, 20, in 2020, it has metamorphosed into um, a monster of, um, I don't know the words, but it's difficult to capture. Now there is very serious security challenge to the point that um, a good analyst will understand that Mr. President's statement is an admission that, yes, we've lost it. We are not giving Nigerians uh, the security they deserve. They are not getting the dividend of uh, the political promises. So I think we have to look at a wider scope of the challenge. The Nigerian people remain the beneficiaries or the victims of these security um, uh, instabilities. And um, we should take a deeper look at the, at the, at the structures of governance. Um, the people in the army, the soldiers, the policemen, we're all Nigerians. And we came through a system. So if we come through a disintegrated system and structure, if people are not uh, taking ownership of the assignments they are given to do on behalf of Nigerians, for the benefit of Nigerians, then we might be having a greater challenge. No matter how politically correct we might sound. Let, uh, let me come in media. here. Uh, let me come in here briefly and, and just try to maybe put this another way. Because when you hear the statement, re-engineering of the entire security apparatus, you kind of wonder what that means. What should we expect? And, and the question here is, is there like a standard? Is there a standard definition of re-engineering the entire security apparatus? Is there a generally acceptable standard? Or it's contextual in this case? I think that's the question. What should we be expecting? What areas should we be I looking at? It's more of a contextual uh, commitment by the president. Every system has their own SOPs, standard operational standard uh, systems that it runs on its own. Um, most, they've gone through trainings. There are standard uh, training programs that produces the men and women of the services. So what, what we need to look at are the underlying elements that have, on, uh, you know, that have affected the operations. If we can identify these challenges, then I, I, I will now take it that that should be the, the region area we are trying to address. But anything further from that will just be another effort in futility because there are some challenges embedded in the system as they run today. Um, probably in the course of the discussion, we might have reasons to mention them. Some are pretty sensitive. You know, there are things that we have brought into the culture of service in Nigerian uh, security systems that are totally harmful to the operations of that system. And I think that should be addressed. You know what, let's just explore those challenges quickly before I go back uh, to Abuja. Because you've started on that note, and let's just tackle this headlong. What are those challenges, or some of those challenges uh, which you have noticed? Um, the basic one is the welfare of the, of the men of the service. A lot of them are not fulfilled. They don't have job satisfaction. And um, the manner and ways they are being treated, um, for instance, uh, recently, about 300 soldiers of the Nigerian army disengaged, resigned from the service. These were men and women probably who saw their future in the uniform services, and they are quitting the job. It's, it's a bad signature. People who read and hear these things will begin to think, 
Secondly, I think the um, the behavior, the, the governance system, have not given the security establishments their proper place. They are being used um, to serve interests outside their traditional roles. You know, if you go um, with due respect to the police, if you go to the police, walk into a police station, it's not what you hear on the media, but interact with these people. They are real people, they are real Nigerians. Um, and I, I, many times I, I, I follow my friend, Frank Mba, the spokesman of the police service. Um, these people need to be motivated. They need to be given tools to work. So they don't have good tools. How can you combat crime when we don't have enough vehicles, enough uh, communication or signal systems? Policing is driven by communications. It's not something you walk through and hold people on the road. We don't have database, a central database that captures everybody that have a history of crime in Nigeria, such that if a crime is committed in Lagos by a person, a Nigerian, and he moves to Niger State and repeats the same crime, the system will capture you, you know? Then the other third thing is also the lifestyle of our leaders. You, an average political office holder operates more than a police station in his convoy. And Nigerians are left with, with, with nothing. How could these people be serving us when they are more protected than the people they serve? All right, just... I, I just don't know if anybody... Yeah, I, we'll get that part. But let's just uh, take that, uh, some of your concerns that you've raised to Brigadier General Usman. Uh, are these some of the uh, concerns that you identified when you say, well, they were going to perhaps have some changes and carry a lot of people along. And if they are, if they address these challenges, that if you admit that these challenges exist in the army, maybe you want to speak to that first. Well, I don't speak for the army, but um, just like he rightly said, some there, of these challenges... Did you notice and observe that the these challenges existed? Yeah, there are challenges quite right, and that was uh, was the basis for the uh, yesterday's uh, National Security Council's uh, meeting and uh, other meetings that were held earlier uh, on daily basis, maybe. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is that he what he said is quite true, and uh, there are some of these challenges that are peculiar to the services and other security agencies. Take for instance. Uh, he made mention of an uh, issue of motivation, and uh, there are also other logistics and, um, uh, what do you call it, equipment. Uh, just when you look at the theater operation, for instance, uh, in the Northeast, you look at the size of that area and the proliferation of all the insurgents and the terrorists there. You need more boots on the ground. Then, secondly... Uh, more than technology or warfare, particularly this uh, aspect of warfare, requires certain sophisticated equipment. Uh, but most importantly, again, it is a people's war, holistically. We need to mobilize the totality of the Nigerian society to make sure that uh, these issues are common to all and we speak with the same, I mean, one voice, and the troops should be motivated should be appreciated, should be commended. Take, for instance, people hardly understand uh, that from the theater commander uh, operation, Lafia Adole, for instance, up to the last man on the, in the trenches, each one of them is just on 1,000 naira per day. But now, at least it has been, you know, upgraded to 2,000 naira per day. But is that enough? What are the remunerations? Because there are some people that have not even seen their families maybe for the past two years or more. Now, you will come and uh, you'll be talking to them as if their lives do not matter, as if their sacrifices are not enough, and as if they are the people that cause the problem. When they are trying hard, sacrificing their lives, you know, to bring solutions to the problems. These and many more are some of the issues that are peculiar to the system. But let's even go back. If you look at it, 
The basis of all these problems, I think we have neglected completely our policing system. From 1999 to date, which is almost 21 years now, uh, you, you can look at it. What was uh, the, 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 the input of the government in terms of manpower holding of the police, training of the police, equipment of the police, and what are those uh, standard operational procedures that he has mentioned, the rules of the police, and to what extent has society assisted, to what extent has the government assisted. These are some of the issues that we'll be looking at. And at the same time, again, the national security strategy that was launched recently uh, clearly defined roles for each component of the Nigerian society. To what extent has the Nigerian society been galvanized you know, to take a front row or rightful the state, I mean, uh, well, position to, to, to contribute their quota? Is it in terms of intelligence gathering? Is it in terms of support for government okay. and understanding well, these issues at hand? So right. we have to do a lot of things, and these are some of the things. That Could you just, because, you know, when you say that uh, it's about, well, from 1,000 to 2,000 naira per day for those who are in the front lines. That's shocking to a lot of people who will hear that. And then they wonder, how long has this been going on for? I mean, they, there was this one, I think it's uh, one trillion, one billion dollars, which is approved for the fight against insurgency. So didn't they raise concerns about the allowances of those on the front lines when all of this was happening? Uh, you, you know, the, the, the truth is that I made mention earlier on we should uh, stop politicizing security matters in this country. It has to be taken very seriously. There shouldn't be differences when it comes to, you know, security of Nigerians and those residing in this country. So the issue of remunerations, the issue of appropriations should be timely should be when you allocate such funds they should be released and they should be given to the appropriate persons and there should be a mechanism of monitoring and evaluating to what extent that money has been used for that purpose that also raises another issue here general um you have talked about remuneration you have talked about politicization and you have talked about equipment for the security um the security agencies and you have actually been generous in talking about the police and the military as well which of these issues do you say that unless we deal with this there is no moving forward is it the political aspect of it or the the financial the funding aspect of it or the equipment equipment for the men and the officers on duty, whether in the army or the police. Which one are we missing out on? Uh, well, I think it's a whole gamut of it. I made mention that it's, uh, some of these problems are peculiar to the services. When I talk about services, I'm talking about the armed forces and the various security agencies. Some of the challenges, uh, you know, uh, being experienced by the Nigerian police force, for instance, are quite different with what the armed forces are, you know, uh, experiencing. But by and large, if you look at, again, the security challenges, each one of it has its own peculiarity. Let's take, for instance, the fight against terrorism and insurgency, particularly in the northern part of Borno State, you know. So uh, what are the challenges? What are the problems? We need more manpower on the ground, and we need more equipment. And of course, other services had to be equally involved and equipped. Take, for instance, the Lake Chad uh, uh, region. Uh, since uh, the attack on Bagat uh, in uh, December 2018, to what extent have we equipped the Navy to take rightful position to deal with the security challenges on those tumbos, on those islands, facing the, the, the Lac province of uh, Lake Chad. And then again, whenever the military uh, were able to, you know, carry out operations and were able to ransack the terrorists out of an environment, uh, the, 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 the first thing to do is to ensure that the area is safe. 
and how do you make just, sure just, that just hold on a moment the hold on a minute all the rest, we'll come after. back to you we'll come back to you to conclude your thoughts when we return from this break please stay with us President Muhammad Buhari has been very supportive of the armed forces and having appointed the service chiefs himself, it seems poised to be a perfectly symbiotic relationship as guaranteeing security was one of the promises the president made to Nigerians in his election campaigns. However, a recent wave of insecurity in the northern part of the country, including an attack on the convoy of the governor of Baranu State, Babagana Zulum, is showing perhaps that all is not well. What happened with that? The shooting that has happened this day no, no, no. is not for Boko Haram. There is. Then yeah, if that is the case, then we are defeated. No, we have cleared 1, them. 1,181 soldiers and 75 officers, we cannot go into a town that has no more than 10 Boko Haram inside. Following renewed calls for the sack of the service chiefs, the National Assembly added its voice to the clamor. Those against any. Thank you. This prompted a reaction from the presidency, who reminded them that any such decision was in the president's purview. And the recurring banditry, kidnapping, and insurgency, including the execution of five aid workers in Maiduguri by Boko Haram, meant reactions kept coming from all quarters. The latest call by the president for an overhaul of the security architecture appears to be an indication of dissatisfaction with the situation and perhaps what to expect in the not-too-distant future. Welcome back. Let's uh, continue with the conversation now. General Osman, could you go ahead You uh, conclude your thought before we put in the next one, please? Talking about, uh, you know, uh, equipping the Navy and um, other security agencies. And beyond that, again, uh, remember when uh, towns like uh, Bama, Mapa, Dikwa, and the rest of them were recaptured, you know, beyond the presence of the military, there was gradual, uh, you know, deployment of uh, government machinery, starting with uh, other security agencies, talking about the police, uh, civil defense, and what uh, have you. So these, these are also supposed to be followed, you know, gradually taking position, because there is a difference between, you know, being present in the theater and maintaining, you know, operational control, especially in asymmetric warfare. It's, it's uh, entirely a different ball game. You might have the number, if you don't have the right equipment, you might not be able to control the territory. Then, again, when you look at the uh, northwestern part of the country, you know, the banditry that is ravaging some parts, uh, thankfully, the military has risen to the occasion uh, based on the directive of Mr. President. But uh, there is still much that needs to be done in terms of, uh, you know, putting more boots on the ground and uh, now, synergy of efforts between the security agencies and the Nigerian society in terms of information, uh, yeah. you know, sharing in terms of uh, support. Okay, yeah, you are we'll let you hand. speak a little bit on that in a moment. But could you tell us, because I remember while you were a spokesman in the army, you, and, you know, I think you were on the national TV, where you said that um, the $1 billion that had been approved by NEC was still, by, by president, was still being processed. So before you left, do you know if any part of that money or all of it has been released? Yeah, well, I'm not too sure, but the truth as of that time was the fact that uh, none of the armed forces has seen a dime as of that time. To what extent it has been released and used, honestly, I have no idea. But I believe if there is anything like that, definitely you would have seen it on the ground and the government will definitely, uh, you know, talked about it. And of course, the recipient themselves would have talked about it and of course show what they have, bearing security considerations, you know, appreciating the fact that uh, this money is making the desired impact. Uh, but I think, uh, I believe the military or the beneficiaries 
will be in a better position to answer that question. It will uh, be let, good if it is released also. Absolutely. Now, let's get back to Mr. Alfred uh, Ononubu. And, you know, on one hand, you have the statement from the president. Now, this is the second time we've had this in the space of two, three months, saying that, you know, the service chiefs are doing their best. And uh, you stop short to say their best is not good enough this time around, saying that more needs to be done. And on the other hand, you have the reality on ground. And take, for instance, a few days ago, the governor of Borno State, his is, is convoy was ambushed, for example. Take another instance, the killings in southern Kaduna. And, and people are wondering, when they hear statements like they're doing their best, but when they look around, they see the security challenge. I wonder, what is the strategy here? Why do we keep hearing that statement, they're doing their best, when it appears as though that is not what we see in reality? Well, first of all, it, it depends on who is speaking. Um, one does not expect the spokespersons of the armed forces to accept failure. On the other hand, the victims should be able to say, oh, yes, to the extent uh, we understand, we feel secured. And when there is a reoccurrence of a particular pattern of uh, attack on people, and you are telling them you are doing your best, the question is, are you doing anything at all? Uh, the attack on the governor just a few days ago is just one out of many. And what bothers me is the fact that the governor has a cocktail of security. There's intelligence um, agencies operating within the governor's convoy. Every government house has all the services fully represented. And I expect that the level of intelligence, both within the governor's um, government house and the state entirely, should be able to identify unusual activities and movements. But this is not happening. And apparently that's why a governor of a state could run into an ambush, you know. Now, the other fear I have, and these are sensitive things, sometimes coming public with them have implications, is that could our system be compromised? Is it possible the system has been infiltrated? Are there possible saboteurs? These are questions someone needs to find answers to. We might not have the answers readily there, but there could be some compromise, there could be some elements of sabotage, there also could be just incapability to discharge expected services that people have been engaged to do. Take for instance, when I look at the process of engaging people in the service and um, administration within some of the services, it's not based on merit. And I'm one of the advocates that in the, in the security structures, we should jettison quota system. We are destroying the spirit of the service um, with this kind of approach in engagement. So it's a serious concern. The Kaduna um, killings have gone on for as long as I can remember. It's not just about Boko Haram or Fulani headsmen or any other thing, but it's been a consistent recurrent engagement that we've come to live with. And I think it's spreading beyond Kaduna. It's happening in Plateau. It happens in Benue. It happens in Nasarawa, and as you move up, Gombe, Gombe, Bauchi, and up to Sokoto, you, you see these things happening. So I think we must um, take a holistic look at what the problems are. Now, speaking of holistic, the last time in June when we had this meeting and the NSA spoke, he mentioned, he referenced the Minister of Defense saying that there's a policy that has been put in place and it's been looked at. And just yesterday, again, he mentioned uh, the Minister of Defense and he says that, you know what, there are plans on ground and Nigerians should rest assured that these plans will manifest and lead to better security. So speaking holistically, because you expect the Minister of Defense to have this, you know, sort of oversight, have this holistic approach to to, to what is happening, not just with the service chiefs, and talking about the Nigerian army, the navy, and what have you, but also the police. What should be the role of the Minister of Defense in all of this? 
um, without being disrespectful, let me state that most times some of the political appointees are really not in touch with the realities of the system. Um, they function based on briefings. Most of them do not know where the closest barrack to their residence are. So, but also to be fair to them, probably that's the level of their understanding. Um, you don't expect someone that had no background knowledge of a service to give what he does not have. You can't give what you don't have. And I would like to appeal to Mr. President that in, in making choice of uh, people to occupy certain offices, consideration should be given to the antecedents and uh, service records. That should help to integrate the activities of that office and the realities on ground. The, 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 the ministers and some of the people who occupy um, offices hardly relate with the everyday security man on the street. So we need to bridge that gap. We need to bridge that gap. And the only Just one moment, Mr. Honorable. Then, Does this yes. then suggest, or rather, would you suggest then that, you know, th there is credence in the appeal that many people have been making around that the service chiefs should be relieved, that sh they should be allowed to go if they are not in touch with the realities, as you have suggested? Not just the service chiefs. A lot of the people wearing ranks in the service should go home. I'm sorry to use that word. A lot, not all of them. I, I, I want to be balanced in my statement. Now, that, 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 also, I mean, that also asks another question, and uh, this is for the, the both of you gentlemen. Um, insecurity is local, and the governors themselves seem helpless about you know, these challenges at the state level. And most of the strategies we're talking about are at the national level. Would you say that we have over-centralized security issues in Nigeria? to the center? Oh, certainly. I believe in community policing. Because I know the people in my community. I know the people I see smoking and drinking by 10 a.m. in the morning when I'm going to work or coming or going to meet a client. So we, we must encourage community policing and give them resources. Because the problem we have here is that we often create institutions without the necessary infrastructures and logistics to run them, just like General was saying. All right. this, we have these things. People are there, but they don't have the capability, resource-wise and logistics, okay. to put it through. All right. Then. Now, uh, let, let me take this to General Sonny. Uh, the, the other time, uh, you were also talking about these things. Uh, would you say, General, that we have over-centralized security? I'm taking this to Abuja now. Would you say that we have over-centralized security and that we need to do something about that decentralized to the states and the locals so that they can also be uh, able to tackle the issues that you say are peculiar to their various states? Um, the, the, the truth is that I don't think that um, um, we have uh, over-centralized. The issue of... Uh, uh, implementation and uh, implementation of policies using the strategies identified. Take, for instance, the issue of community police. It's uh, a phenomenon that has been with us for almost 13 years now, but it has not been implemented. And I know way back 2018, uh, when I was uh, a participant at the National Institute of uh, uh, Policy and Strategic Studies, we told parts of the Nigerian uh, society, we went, some, uh, we went to some parts of uh, Africa and the world, and there were best practices that they have a centralized system, India, uh, Italy, even Ghana here, they have centralized system, but they have policies that are working, that are being followed through, and there is a political will. So we made a recommendation. You, it may surprise you to know that uh, the, we have provision, a constitutional provision for police council. Okay? Police council has never sat, not till when we made a uh, recommendation to the president commander-in-chief. Now, if you look at 
what constitutes that council. Each of the state governors is a member of the police council. So had it been that it's meeting regularly, all this agitation for, you know, state police and what have you, wouldn't have even come forward. I mean, come up. Why? Because all the security challenges, all the issues identified are tabled, discussed, and solutions prepared, and everybody will go back and do his or her own bit as the case may be. But in most cases, we don't do that. Despite the recommendation, it is only few states that are doing it. Some are toying with the idea of vigilante and so many other security outfits. When the community policing work seamlessly well in Ghana, in Italy, in so many other countries, particularly Ghana, when you go to Nima, when you go to Zango, we have seen it. It worked. And of course, here in the Nigerian society, you know, in the days, even with the native authorities and what have you, you know, there was community policing, intelligent gathering, just like he rightly said. Everybody is a kind of a security conscious to the point that before a problem comes up, it will be identified and nipped in the board. And if it happens, it won't take long. The perpetrators General, the problem, we, we need to wrap about this time. Bridge will be apprehended. We do thank you for your thoughts. Retired Brigadier General Sani Usman, and also former Director, Ami Public Relations, as well as Alfred Anonugo, who is a security analyst. Thank you both for talking to us this morning. All right, we'll be back in a moment. We'll turn our attention to another matter. Please stay with us.